Hello everybody and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. In this video we're going to be talking about something new which is position vectors. So before we start I just want to say that I hope you all are doing well, hope you're enjoying engineering thus far. Hopefully you guys are handling it well and not going too crazy. Alright so let's begin. In the last lecture we talked about 3D vectors and we talked about how they're basically the same as two-dimensional vectors and all the formulas are basically the same. The only thing we had to do was account for that third component, that k component. Now when we're talking about the components of 3D vectors I said that there's three cases you guys are going to see. The first two are trigonometry and coordinate direction angles and those are all very trig based. And I said well that's great but it's not really realistic because it involves angles. In real life you're not going to go and measure the angle of something. You're going to look uh, pretty silly out in the field with your little protractor trying to do that. So we're going to talk about a third way which has to do with position vectors. So the key here, position vectors, we have to discuss what exactly it is. So a position vector locates one point in space relative to another. Now it doesn't really make sense but let's just kind of go through and see what we can find. So it's denoted as r with a little arrow, so again it's a vector, and it's a position vector between two coordinate points. All right. So if I want a position vector between two points, I need to know the coordinates of those two points. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coordinates of where I end up minus my initial coordinate. So if we look at this formula here, if we say position vector AB, this is the position vector that goes from A to B. So that's going to be important. This starts at A and it goes to B. So when we look at the subscript there, the first letter is where it starts, the second letter is where it ends. Now if I want this position vector, what I have to do is I have to take the coordinate points of where I end up, so that's going to be coordinate point B, and I'm going to subtract it from the coordinate points of where I started. So in this case it's going to be coordinate point A. So let's take a look in 3D. I don't know about you guys, but when I see a bunch of words I get a little bit confused. I like to actually see it visually. So let's say that we have our nice 3D space and inside of our 3D space we have two points. We have a purple point and we have a blue point. Now we know that there is going to be coordinate points associated with these points. So what's typically going to happen is they're going to give you either geometry or the coordinate points themselves it's very easy to figure out what these coordinate points are going to be. So here I just gave you the coordinate points and we know that between these two points we can form a line. All right, So there's going to be a linear line between these two points. What position vectors are, are basically the vector that goes from one point to the other point. So if I'm starting from the purple point and going to the blue point, I would call this position vector PB. Now I know that PB is making all these speedrunners probably very excited, but it doesn't have to do with that kind of PB. It's just uh, P and B, purple and blue. Simple as that. Now, the key to keep in mind with these position vectors is going to be the direction. So notice how if I'm going from P to B, then my arrow starts at the purple point and goes to the blue point. If the arrow was the other way, this would be position vector BP. Boston Pizza. <laughs> I guess I'm making everybody excited here. All right, so let's do an example to kind of show you guys what I mean. If I want that position vector PB, I'm going to take my coordinate points of where I end up, which in this case is the blue point, and I'm going to subtract where I started. In this case, it's the purple point. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take the coordinate points of the blue point, and I'm going to subtract the coordinate points of the purple point, and I get the following. So notice how I got a vector here. Now the first component is negative 6i. How did I get that? Well, I took the negative 2, and I subtracted 4. The second component is 5j. How did I get that? Well I took the 4 and subtracted negative 1. And of course for the k point I took the 3 and subtracted negative 2. Now what exactly do these components mean? When we drew that position vector we drew it directly from the purple point to the blue point, the shortest possible distance. But if I want to I can take an alternative route that follows the axis. So in this particular case I went five units in the positive y direction, so that's why I got the 5j. I went six units in the negative x direction, which is why I have the negative 6i. And then I went five units in the k direction, or the positive z direction. So this is exactly the same as force vectors. The only difference is instead of dealing with forces, of course we are now dealing with units of distance. All right. So other than that, they are the exact same. Again, I'm going to note one more thing because I really want you guys to remember this because it gets every student in the exam. When I mark exams, I'd say maybe 20% of students always fall for this trap. 
the order of these position vectors matter. The position vector from P to B is not the same as position vector from B to P. They'll have the same numbers, but they'll just be all multiplied by negative one. It'll be the opposite direction. So please keep that in mind. So let's talk about the features of a position vector. So remember with force vectors, once we had it in Cartesian vector notation, we can do some sexy things to it. We can find the magnitude, we can find its unit vector, all that fun stuff. Good news for us is position vectors follow the exact same logic. So if I have a position vector AB and I have its three components, well, I can actually write it in terms of a magnitude multiplied by its unit vector. What are the formulas? Well, they're actually the exact same as force vectors in 3D. So if I want the magnitude, all I'm going to do is take all of those components, square them, add them together, and then square root them. So again, exact same. Now, the question becomes, what exactly is the magnitude of a position vector? So the magnitude of a position vector is actually the distance between those two points, that shortest distance. Now, this is important because what professors love to do in exams is they use words. Instead of showing you guys something, they will explicitly say in the question, the distance between point B and point C is 6 meters. Now, if you guys don't know that the magnitude of a position vector is the distance, that 6 meters to you guys is kind of useless. But now when you guys see this, you guys are going to say 6 meters, uh, the position vector from B to C, that is equal to 6, or the magnitude of that position vector. How about the unit vector? Well, it's actually going to be the same. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take each component of my position vector and I'm going to divide it by its magnitude. So exact same procedure as force vectors. Let's do a quick example to really show you guys what I mean. So in the previous slide, we had our position vector that went from the purple point to the blue point, and we determined it as negative 6i plus 5j plus 5k. Now, if I wanted the magnitude, again, all I'm going to do is take those components so the negative 6, the 5, and the other 5, I'm going to square them all, add them together, and then square root it, and I get 9.27. You guys are saying, Clayton, I kind of forget, what does this value mean? Well, this is the actual distance between those two points, so it's 9.27. Now, I can take that 9.27, and I can use it to determine now the unit vector for this position vector. So again, all I'm doing is I'm taking each component and dividing it by its magnitude. So for example, when I have that negative 6i, I'm going to take that negative 6, divide it by the 9.27, that's going to be my i component for the unit vector. So at the end, I get my unit vector is equal to this. And you guys may be saying, all right, what does that look like in terms of a picture? Well, remember that unit vectors, their sole job is to define direction. So if I were to draw the unit vector on this picture, we know it's going to look something like this, where it's simply just showing the direction of that position vector. It's doing nothing else, just showing the direction. So the question becomes, well, we were talking about force vectors. Why are position vectors related to force vectors? Well, it's actually very important because if a force vector and a position vector are in the same alignment, they have the same direction. If they have the same direction, then they have the same unit vector. So this is where it's going to become particularly important. So let's say that we have our case from before, we have our two points, but in the question it says that between these two points there's a force vector. And this force vector starts at point P and it ends up at point B. And this is very realistic. If you guys go out in real life and you guys were to measure a cable, you would know the start and the end points of the cable. You would know the coordinate points. So this is where it gets very realistic. Now, we know that this force vector from before has a unit vector that's aligned with its direction. So if we wanted to, we can say that this force vector is actually a combination of the magnitude multiplied by that unit vector. Now, from the previous slide, we also said that if we have a point that goes, or sorry, we have a position vector that goes from the purple point to the blue point, we can write it as follows, where the position vector is equal to the magnitude of that position vector multiplied by the unit vector of that position vector. Now the key here to realize is that if they have the same direction, they actually have the exact same unit vector. That's the key here. They have the same unit vector. Therefore, I can do a little bit of fancy algebra and say, all right, if I want my force vector, I can actually write it in terms of my position vector. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that formula I have for position vector and I'm going to rearrange it to give me the following, where the unit vector PV is simply going to be my position vector PV 
divided by the magnitude. And then I'm going to take that nice relationship, substitute it up above into my force vector equation, and now I get an equation for my force vector. So my force vector is actually equal to the magnitude of the force vector, and then multiplied by the position vector divided by the magnitude of that position vector. So again, when I get that force vector PB, it's going to have all three components because it's going to be in Cartesian vector notation. So if I know all three components, well, we can conclude that using these position vectors, we can actually determine every component of our force vector. So this is why position vectors are so important, and this is why I call it the third case. So remember, when we're dealing with components and forces, there's going to be three cases. One I call the trig case, and that's where they give you two angles, one in the xy plane and then one going up to the vector. We have the coordinate direction angle case, where we have all three coordinate direction angles. And now this is the third case, where instead of giving you guys any sort of angles, they give you two points along the line of action of this force vector. If they give you those two points, we can create a position vector, and then from there we can solve in the general format for the force vector. So that's it for this video. I just want to thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will see you guys in the next lecture video.